I work with data. What that means is I actually create pieces that are called data visualizations. Data visualizations are a piece of communication objects that helps us to understand what's happening in reality better. Let me give you a couple of examples about what I'm talking. This is a project realized by Ars Electronica Future Lab where I did my senior research residency for five years. Uh, it's called GeoCity Linz. It is an exhibition installation still ongoing in Ars Electronica Center. And it is a large table that is installed in the exhibition space. You can come as a visitor and you can see and explore different data sets overlaying on the city, both on the table and also as well as on the screens. So the purpose of this exhibition was actually showing Linz to its inhabitants in a better way, like giving more details about what is actually surrounding us, what else we can discover about the city. Later on, I was involved with a project organized by Austrian Institute of Technology, and they were working with cap stands in Vienna, collecting all their GPS locations for several days. They shared the data with me. It was more than a million points per day, and I start visualizing it. What I, what I start seeing it is a different version of Vienna city map without having any cartographic design. So you are seeing in this video that, you know, how the cabs are traveling from airport to the city most often, as well as in the city center. But what's happening after every hour, the video changes its color and showing us the, the, the transition and the change in the, in the traffic. What this end up being, this large print of posters that has been exhibited, including Vienna, Linz, Shanghai, and New York, uh, that people were able to see a different version of Vienna. I want to show you a close-up of this. So this overlay created by the data, created by the movements of the cabs, is actually giving us a better detail about how Vienna is living during one particular day. But when we look at all the different hours, we start seeing that how actually the city is forming itself without really seeing any buildings or people, but just seeing all these data vessels, bloods, streaming through the arteries of the city. I'm not the only one in this field doing such projects and working with data. There are extremely important people, such as Eric Fischer, who is working with data and maps, and he calls himself as a modern cartographer for many years. This is a project Eric, done by Eric Fischer, and it is a visualization of Flickr pictures taken by locals and tourists in different cities. You can see New York City on the left and London on the right. As you can imagine, locals are always taking pictures everywhere, but tourists are only interested in certain destinations in the city. Maybe Vienna can explain this better, because you see that there is an anomaly in this picture, which is Schönbrunn, as you can guess. So most of the tourists are going there and taking pictures and geo taking their pictures. So at the end, what we see, also locals are not maybe taking so many pictures or maybe not posting on Flickr as well. I have a researcher friend, uh, Edward Lee, who is from New York City. He's working on these projects that uh, personally uh, exploring the open data provided by the city government and creating all these maps. This is about the collision. Uh, it's about the accidents and crashes happening in different parts of the city. And as you can see by an individual, how powerful tools and interfaces you can create with open data today. You can just explore all the different type of crashes. You can see different neighborhoods. You can even like go into detail and see the corners that the crash happened. But he is also a researcher on cities, and he's coming up with very interesting ideas. Another one, which is, I think, more interesting, this is New York City subway map, excluded from the cartography again. But you can see this subway map as a network as well. So when we start seeing the map as a network, we actually start to understand that there are different relationships happening, uh, excluded from geography, excluded from distance, but it's more about proximities and, and different ways of exploring the subway. I think one of the most interesting projects about data and city and maps is uh, happened after New York City government released their uh, cab data, taxi data, in 2013. And this is showing us how travelers arriving to New York, to JFK, and where they go. And as you can see, this is showing almost in real time what's happening, and it's enormous amount of traffic that we are able to capture and visualize in real time today. 
So people like me, researchers, designers, while we were working on such projects, something else interesting happening right now, and it is this. What is happening that there is this concept of smart city, right? I think most of us, at least we heard something smart nowadays, smart home, smart healthcare, smart city. Um, and when you just, you know, check the news streams, what you see is lots of numbers. Numbers are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the latest number I was able to find a couple of days ago is one and a half trillion dollars marketplace for smart cities. So I just want to talk about this. What is really happening? Okay, all this data is great, so we can visualize and see cities even as an individual at our place using our laptops. But what is this market? Like why people are so much into this smart city concept and what they are expecting, what they're expecting us to provide. One example is the dashboard of London City. So uh, it is a nationwide organization happening right now in the UK, and you can see like you know dashboards for each city. This is you see it's, uh, the one from London, and this is uh, basically showing us what's happening in the city. Everything is green, perfect. So the subway lines are working fine. Everything is going well, CCTV footage, everybody likes to surveillance each other, so perfect. But there are some um, more difficult pictures to get, um, and I, I just you know, got it from some different videos. This is the, the center, Smart City Center in Rio, and um, you can definitely expect to see in so-called developing world, the centers are getting more and more technological and actually a little bit more advanced in quotation. This is another picture. So what's happening here, they see lots of different data sources combined together, overlaid on each other, and they can basically watch the city in a different lens, from the lens of data. A little bit crazy one, it's from South Korea, Gangnam City Surveillance Center. I mean, I actually have no idea how they're able to see everything at this one, but they do. Um, and maybe the most important one, now Singapore takes it to another level and it says it's not only smart city, it's going to be smart nation. So, and how they want to do this? Um, they want to create fiber optic cables or all around their nation. Even We all know that it's small, but still I think it's a big challenge. And they will capture everything. Like they will capture all the data, whatever possible, and most probably create a much better looking uh, center than the ones before and that will be the smart nation of Singapore. When we look at these smart city concepts, their agenda, their plans, and their programs, what they usually show us is something like this. So what's going to happen? There's this perfect network in the center. Everything is connected to each other. There's smart, smart healthcare, smart transportation, smart citizen, and smart mobility, smart infrastructure, and everything works in a harmony, and everything works perfect. And I started to think about what is smart. When you check Oxford Dictionary, what smart is, I think there are so many ways to describe what smart is, but this is the most applicable one. It says programmed so as to be capable of some independent action. That means that without us, without our decision making, it will act. It will just you know, respond to certain actions as a reaction. If you don't know, if you're not into technology, I want to explain how this is really going to work. So how cities will be smarter? So there are three different buckets of features or functionality we need to sustain. The first thing is Internet of the Things, which I'm sure most of you have heard before. It is these small devices starting from smartphones, maybe you know the thermostat at your place, the, your car, your traffic light. Everything around you is going to be turning into a sensor. The second, all this data needs to be collected. And then the third, some algorithms are actually going to create some actions. In a different way, we can say there will be sensing everything, storing everything, and then computing all this stored data. But for a more you know, meaningful and daily language, what's really going to happen is there will be recording of everything, analyzing of everything, and optimization at the end. That's what most of the smart city concepts are suggesting us today. So I just started to think, then, what would be the smartest city, right? That's, then the smartest city is the city that records, analyzes, and optimizes everything of everyone in the city. So I just want to take a pause here, because the question is, is this really what we want? Is this the smart city that we want? And what's, what they are showing us, these are, 
a collection of pictures. If you just you know, Google smart city, you can end up having millions of these, all these blue and green and you know, smartphones are underlaying from the city infrastructure, like all these nice concept pictures. But based on what actually is offered to us, is this really going to happen like that? Or maybe it's going to happen more like this. That there is one, I'm sure most of you have remembered the movie, it's Blade Runner, uh, the masterpiece of Ridley Scott. There is one big corporation that actually controls the whole city. The vessels, the blood of smart city is data. And when we start to see that more data is being released, also we started to see more problems, what potential problems might happen. I think a great example is the New York taxi data, the, the visualization that I showed earlier before. People, researchers, when they get their hands on this data, they started to realize that actually it is anonymized, but they were able to dig in and find the real identities of people, either cab, cab drivers, taxi drivers, or people who were in the cab, like celebrities. And they started to release that, you know, how much celebrities tip to a cab driver and like public shaming and everything else happened. The second story, it's called as a Rise of Glory incident. It is basically one of the famous car sharing companies, since they record everything about our rides, they started to realize and analyze, oh, well, what happens if we analyze uh, how many people traveling two times between 4 a.m. and 10 a.m. in the morning, that we might call it as a one-night stand, because they go somewhere and then they leave early. Then they visualize this and wrote a blog post. Later, they removed from their blog, obviously. Uh, but this gives us an idea what is actually possible with data and algorithms. And actually, if you start reading more and more between the lines, or even the titles of the articles related to smart city, related how things are going to get smarter, you started to see things like more interesting, like predictive policing. What is predictive policing? Predictive policing is basically preventing a crime before it happens based on data and algorithms. Such a great idea. So the, the questions we need to ask, why should cities be smart? Do we really need smarter cities, or do we really need something else? Or who actually defines the smart? Smart for whom? Smarter than what? I can give you an idea. I don't know smart for whom or smarter than what, but I can tell you who actually defines smart is right now is a very small group of companies and government agencies. There is very little citizenship involved into the decision making right now. So as I said, data is the real fuel of this. But what data is doing, data shows us anomalies, patterns. It's extremely strong for certain things. It can give us fuels efficiency. It can help us to improve things. I think most of the engineers in the room, they know how data is powerful because we can record, analyze, and optimize everything with data. Data gives certain power and authority to control things. But what data cannot tell us what is smart and what is not. What is a better action, what is not. What is right, what is wrong. Data cannot tell us. And cities are not machines. Inhabitants are not clockworks that needs to be optimized. It's not a machine that we are trying to create and optimize better and better for efficiency and better quality. It is actually a living space with inhabitants. In order to highlight this, I worked on a project with a, with a colleague of mine, Orkan Talhan, from UPenn. And we did this project. It was called United Colors of Descent. And our idea was very simple, how we can give a different voice to people in the public, especially minorities, working class, people who are mostly underrepresented in any brochure or leaflet that you can see about smart cities. But we still wanted to do with this data and technology. So we designed this very simple interface which can work in many, many languages at the same time. So we were inclusive, not exclusive. Uh, we researched about different languages and understand them, translated our questions to those languages. So you select your language, you come up with a, you see the question on your screen, and then you answer the question, and in real time, you see how other people answered like you. We translated questions more than 20 different languages and performed the, the project in four different cities including some languages that are officially not existing in any country. And this is a screenshot from how it actually worked in Zaragoza. And I can show you a short video, actually, how it really works. So the question comes. This is what you see on the media facade in real time. 
and then people are answering. So if we see that, you know, what people really think, whether they are, whether they ever felt discriminated or not, whether they uh, like where they live or not. So the purpose of this project was showing that, you know, data is extremely powerful, but the quality and the right questions are more important than what we really capture. And also, we never should forget the dynamics of the public space. This is a picture from Linz, one of the cities where the performance uh, was exhibited. And what we have observed that people are living in a different set of rules and, and rhythms in public life. It's not like, you know, they live to just leave some traces and so some companies can collect data and analyze what's going on. Um, so what do we need? Like, what, what, okay, great, I'm really highlighting lots of problems, but then what do we need? I think what we really need, first of all, citizens should care about what is smart, what they have been promised, what these people telling us that cities are going to be smarter. Second, we need, I think we need more philosophers. In the 20th century, one of the biggest problems is that we don't have enough philosophers to think and work with data and technology and everything new. We also need more artists and activists to understand what's going on and to tell us, to show us, to leak all the problems that is existing around us, to show us different perspectives. Also companies. Companies are a big part of the uh, solution and the problem at the same time. They should be more transparent. They should be more accountable. They should basically share what they know with us so we can also bring our own perspective to the public space. Also governments and politicians. Um, it is maybe one of the hardest wish, but you know, I really wish that you know, they make more educated decisions and act for the benefits of their citizens instead of something else. And the last thing that I want to highlight again about data, data is something good and bad at the same time. It's all about how we actually use it. If we can use the data to make smart cities in a good way, we can make them also truly democratic. Thank you.